Okay, so welcome to this fourth video in which we are discussing the cardiac action potential. Okay, so in the break uh, between uh, the previous video and this video, I just wanted to check that what I was telling you was correct. Now, okay, so it is correct, but not the way I... S well, it, it wasn't correct. But I need to... it is correct in some cases, this multimization rule. So let me tell you a little bit more. Right, so, these alpha subunits that we use to construct voltage-gated potassium channels, used to construct the pore-forming subunit of the um, voltage-gated potassium channel, basically, there are, as I told you, there are about 40 genes that code for these alpha subunits. Now, we categorize these up into families. So we categorize them up into the KV, so KV stands for voltage-gated potassium channel, and then we have the KV1 family, and it goes on. We have the KV2 family, then it goes on all the way down to KV12. So we have 12 different families of genes. So let me start again. We have 40 genes for these alpha subunits. We categorize them into families. Okay, there are 12 families we are going to categorize them into, and each of these families contains multiple of those 40 genes. So, for instance, KV1 has the KV1.1 gene, the KV1.2 gene, and then it goes on all the way down to the KV1.8 gene. So that family has eight different genes for voltage-gated potassium channels. The KV2 will then have members within it, and the, all of these 12 families will have some genes within them, and the number of the gene is uh, encoded by the decimal, well, to, uh, te the decimal point tells you which actual gene it is. Okay, now, basically, you can make homotetramers of all, with all of these alpha subunits. So every single one of these alpha subunits can come together and form a pore where it's used in all four sockets. Okay, so that's very nice and simple. So we can make 40 different voltage-gated potassium channels that way. When you make heterotetramers, it's more complicated. You firstly cannot mix and match between different families. In fact, this is why we uh, grouped them into these families in this way, because it helps us understand the heterotetramization. Basically, you can only form heterotetramers between genes that are in the same family, okay? So, if you want to form a heterotetramer, maybe between KV1.1 and KV1.2, you can do it. If you want to form a heterotetramer between KV1.1 and KV2.1, it's a no-no. So, uh, you can't form heterotetramers where you use genes from di the different families to uh, make the different alpha subunits that you're going to put together into a voltage-gated potassium channel. So if you make a heterotetramer, it's always using genes that are in the same family, basically. Now, this drawing I drew here, where you have uh, two different genes uh, that are being used in the heterotetramer, and uh, each of those genes makes two proteins which are put diagonally opposite to one another in the heterotetramer. This is true for the KV1 family, the KV7 family, and the KV10 family. Okay? So in KV1, which is arguably the most important family, this is the only way you can make heterotetramers, i.e. you can only pick two of these genes, which you're going to make a heterotetramer out of, and you have to use each one of those genes twice to make two proteins, and then the way you have to arrange these proteins in the heterotetramer has to be so that the two identical ones are diagonally opposite each other. So for KV1 families, KV7 families, and KV10 families, this holds true. For the other families, the heterotetramization is more complicated and you can make more vast arrays of heterotetramers. So basically, voltage-gated potassium channels is a uh, complicated business. Right, okay. So, now, we're going to move on to the actual voltage-gated potassium channels that we find within uh, cardiac muscle cells. Okay, so... The ones which we're interested in at the moment 
are basically uh, those ones which are going to cause the little blip in the action potential, the ones that are going to be activated directly after the uh, voltage-gated sodium channels have closed, basically. Okay, now these uh, voltage-gated potassium channels, there's two of them that are important. Firstly, we have a heterotetramer of KV4.2 with KV4.3. Now, this family, these genes, KV4.2 and KV4.3, they are in the KV4 family. The KV4 family is not the family that obeys this nice, simple heterotetramization rule. I do not know what rule the KV4 family um, obeys, I'm afraid. So I do not know quite how this heterotetramer works. You are using these two genes, but whether you, um, you know, whether you use both twice to make two proteins from each and then you combine them in this diagonal way, I don't know. All I know is that you've use some KV4.2s 2 and some KV4.3s. So we're going to make a KV4.2 and a KV4.3 heterotetramer. Okay, so that means we're going to use this gene and this gene uh, to make proteins, to make alpha subunits. We're going to stick those in here. How and in what proportions, I don't know. Maybe you might use three of one and one of the other, but the point is that you use both and you make this KV4.2, KV4.3 heterotetramer. Okay, right. That's going to be one of the important potassium channels in this next stage of the cardiac action potential. The other one is going to be KV1.4, and thank God this is a homotetramer. Okay, so this one is um, KV1.4, this gene down here, which is in the first family. Okay, and you just um, tetramer, you just repeat it four times. You use the gene four times to make four alpha subunits, and you put each one into uh, this, these four sockets, and you've made your pore of your voltage-gated potassium channel. And you are then free to, you know, add a few beta subunits on if you wish. Okay, so what do these channels actually do? We've spent a lot of time looking at the pharmacology. Uh, now let's actually look at the physiology. What are they going to do? Right. Well, basically, at the moment, we've got to this depolarized state here. We're at around plus 20 millivolts um, because of the voltage-gated sodium channels. But they have now closed. Their business is done. So now what's going to happen is these voltage-gated potassium channels, which are of this KV4.2, KV4.3 heterotetramer or KV1.4 homotetramer type, uh, these are going to open next, okay? And they are going to allow potassium to leave the cell. Now, potassium concentration inside the cell is 155 millimolar. Potassium concentration outside the cell is 4 millimolar. So that's why potassium is going to leave the cell. In addition, you have to now factor in the fact that the electrical potential difference across this membrane is plus 20 millivolts. That means that the intracellular compartment is now at a higher electrical potential than the extracellular compartment, and it's higher by 20 millivolts. Okay, potassium is a positively charged ion. It wants to be where the electrical potential is lower, which is now the extracellular compartment. So both the concentration gradient and the electrical gradient are favoring the movement of potassium out. So you're going to get a movement of potassium ions out of the cell. And when you move positive charge out of the cell, uh, that's going to lower the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment and raise the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment. So this one here is going to go down, become more negative. This one is going to go up, become more positive. So you're going to have a number that's getting more negative being subtracted by a number getting more positive. That means this overall electrical potential difference is going to get more negative, so you're going to repolarize the membrane. Now, these voltage-gated potassium channels that I've described to you, they are activated by phase zero, by this rapid depolarization. At some point along this depolarization, they'll have been activated, so they're voltage activated. And now they've opened just when the voltage-gated sodium channels have, op uh, have closed, rather. So, they're going to allow potassium to move out, and they're going to cause 
a repolarization. So you're going to get the line coming back down, and I've connected that to the wrong line. Then you're going to get the line coming back down like this. So the electrical potential difference across the membrane is going to come back down almost to zero, basically. Now, these channels are extremely uh, transient in how long they are open. They open for an instant, basically, and then they shut. And in that time, they don't conduct that much potassium. So you only get this repolarizing to around zero millivolts before these channels that we spent all that time studying have closed. So they only did this little blip of the action potential, basically. That's what they were responsible for, a tiny little blip in the cardiac action potential here. Okay, but this blip has a name, and it's very distinctive. You always see it on the cardiac action potential. It's known as phase one which is this point where you are allowing potassium to move out of the cell transiently, and that slightly repolarizes the uh, electrical potential difference across the membrane. And because of this, this current of potassium out is often referred to as the current of potassium, which is transient outward, basically. Okay, so um, you, you may see it referred to as IKTO. Okay, so for the TO means transient outward current of potassium. Transient outward. Okay, and it's these two potassium channels that we've discussed, the KV4.2, 4.3 heterotetramers, and the KV1.4 homotetramers, which are responsible for that uh, movement of potassium out of the cell transiently. And that causes this slight repolarization of the electrical potential difference across the membrane. Okay, right, but they're now over. Their contribution is over. And in the next video, what we'll do is we'll start discussing the voltage-gated calcium channels.